Hey guys, I hope you are all doing really well. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make a very easy brush roll. I have been using mine non-stop since making it. I was starting to feel a bit strange that my brushes were all mixed up in all my makeup and just tumbling around in my makeup bag so I thought I'll make something that will keep them nice and separate and also separate from each other. I think part of what drove me to making a brush roll was the fact that I've been really conscious of my skin recently. Um, the last few years my skin has just been all over the place and I now use a different face cloth every single time I dry my face and so I was like mm, maybe my brushes should be a bit cleaner and not you know touching touching my face and makeup and blah blah blah. So I've just been looking at everything within my like skincare makeup routine and thinking how can I make this more hygienic <laughs> and I must say using a fresh face cloth to dry my face every day fresh one morning and night um, it has made a lot of difference in my skin and I'm getting fewer spots <laughs> still a lot of it is down to my diet and chocolate chocolate is now the enemy sadly um, but it doesn't stop me from eating it Anyway, I'm going to get on to a skincare ramble if I carry on for any longer. So, this is the brush roll. <laughs> it comes in two different sizes. I've just released a pattern for it. It will be linked down below in the description bar. And it's a really nice, easy, so just so therapeutic to make. And I love, oh, it's so satisfying to roll up. So you've got the regular size and the tall size. Um, this is what they look like opened up. I made some... Some more, I've just been going brush roll crazy. So this is the regular one opened up. And you can fit some little knitting needles in it. Um, I also fit my makeup brushes in this one just fine. But if you have longer makeup brushes, then the tall one would be good for you. This is a regular size. As you can see, the brushes all fit very easily. This is probably the biggest brush and it's still fine. It's got a little flap that covers the brushes to keep them even more clean and obviously you can wash all of this and then it's got a long strap that you just thread around the bag and roll it around and then you can just tuck it in and there you go it stays shut if you've made one of my toiletry bags in the past then they also fit in that the regular size fits width ways so you can easily put that right on top of all your makeup um, but the tall one doesn't doesn't quite fit width ways but it can fit standing up so if you want to have the tall one in your makeup bag you can have it standing up in there but if you're looking to just make one for your usual makeup brushes then I would just stick with the smaller standard size in this tall one I actually put some pens and paint brushes so you can use it for all sorts. So there we go, a very nice little beginner friendly pattern. Um, I hope you guys enjoy this video and I'm going to get on and show you how to make this brush roll. I'm just going to quickly show you how to print out the pattern if you do decide to download it. So the file I've got open here is compatible with A4 or US letter size paper. You just need to make sure the scale is set to 100%. It's not double sided and I like to print out one page to start with just to check the size and then I go ahead and print the others. Then just go ahead and print out the rest of the pattern. The instruction booklet will tell you how to arrange the pages but we need some tape and some print stick and I'm just going to start by removing one of the edges of the paper. I like to just use scissors, I find it a bit easier than a guillotine. All of the pages have a black line around it so you can easily cut around that. Then you're just going to want to glue one side and match up those registration marks. Once they're all glued together I go ahead and add some clear tape just along the joins so that when I cut them out all of the pattern piece stays together. And then you've just got to go ahead and cut out all of the pattern pieces. Now we're going to start cutting out our fabric. So I'm going to start with pattern piece A. And for this piece, you're going to want to cut slightly larger than the pattern piece if you're going to quilt it. Cut that out in your outer and wadding, both slightly bigger. But then the lining piece can be the same size as the pattern. Then we just go ahead and cut out the rest of the pieces. 
Now we're going to get started on the quilting. So I use fusible wadding and I start off by just ironing my outer piece of fabric and then I just fuse the fabric onto the wadding. I chose to do vertical lines for my quilt pattern with a distance of two centimetres in between. Now that we've finished the quilting, you can go ahead and put the paper pattern piece back on top, pin it into place and cut around it. We're now going to grab the brush pocket and we're going to fold the top flat edge down by one centimetre and then we're going to fold down by another centimetre and press again. Then taking it over to the sewing machine, we're just going to stitch along that fold. We're going to place that pocket on top of the main body lining piece and we're going to match that up at the bottom corner, add a few pins and then we're going to stitch around with a 0.5 centimetre seam allowance. We're just holding the pocket into place here so don't worry about the stitching being too neat. Now we're going to make the top flap so we're going to put both lining and outer pieces good sides facing and we're going to stitch all the way around the curved edge leaving the flat top edge open. We're going to reduce the bulk on those corners by trimming the seam allowance down to about 0.5 centimetres before turning it inside out and really pushing out those corners. I'm going to press the corners and the edge so they sit nice and flat and then I'm going to top stitch 0.5 centimetres away from the edge. We're now going to add that piece to the main body lining and we're going to find the notches at the top of the pattern piece and we're just going to line those up with the top flap. Pin that into place so it's not going to move anywhere and you're just going to stitch along the top with a 0.5 centimetre seam allowance. We're now going to work out the placement of the brushes. I have a template on the pattern which fits a good amount of brushes, small, medium and large, um, but you can choose to use your own brushes and figure out a system and then measure from there but I find this template works really well. So I find it easiest to take note from the bottom and then take the pattern piece off and draw a line from the top to the bottom just so it makes it much easier when I'm sewing. Once I've drawn out my guidelines I then take it over to the sewing machine and I make sure to backstitch at the opening at the top of the pocket and at the bottom. If you're going to be putting brushes in and out of it all the time, then you definitely need to make sure there's a lot of reinforcing stitches at the top of that pocket. I'm going to show you how to make the tie now. You don't have to do a custom tie, you can use bias trim or any other trim you like. So you're going to start off by ironing the tie flat and then you're going to iron it in half and open it back up again. Then using that halfway line as a guide, you're going to fold the edge up by one centimetre and just keep going all the way along to the end and then you're just going to do exactly the same to the other side folding it up to meet the middle and then once you've folded up both long ends you fold the whole thing in half again and just iron all the way down then we're just going to take that over to the sewing machine and stitch close the open edge I like to use the inside of my sewing machine foot as a guide I then go ahead and finish one end of the tie by folding it up a few times and just stitching that across and that just gives a really nice neat end to the tie. You only need to do that on one side though because the other will be hidden within the seam allowance. Then we're going to grab the quilted main body piece, put the pattern back on top and take note of where that right hand notch is and that's where we're going to put the tie. So just pin the raw edge end of the tie at the side and then we're going to go and stitch that down. We're so nearly finished, we're going to add the lining piece on top of the main body quilted piece and we're going to pin that into place so it should match up all the way around the edge. Make sure the tie is kept inside and isn't going to get caught in any of the seam allowance. Then we're going to stitch all the way around the main body, leaving a gap of around 10 centimetres at one end. We're going to be leaving this gap on the opposite end to where the tie is stitched on. Stitching curves can be quite tricky, but I find it helpful if you use a pencil and mark out your seam allowance so you know where you're going to be stitching. And then just take it really slowly on those corners, placing your needle down, lifting the foot up and moving the fabric around. Then before we turn the bag the right way around, we're going to reduce some of that bulk around the corners, just trimming the edges off. Then we can go ahead and turn the brush roll the right way around and spend a good bit of time just opening those edges out. Mm -hmm. 
Now we're going to take the whole thing over to the ironing board, press it flat, and also press that seam allowance under at the opposite end to the tie. Once that's all pressed and the seam allowance is nicely folded under, we're going to go and top stitch all the way around the edge of the brush roll. You need to make sure the top flap is sitting inside of the brush roll when we're top stitching. And there we go, that is your brush roll completely finished. It's a really lovely little sewing project, very satisfying and also super useful. Here's a little look at what the tall brush roll looks like in comparison to the regular size. And of course it doesn't have to just be brushes that you use in your brush roll, you can use some knitting needles, anything that you want to go in your little roll. I really hope you guys have enjoyed watching this video, as always the pattern is linked down below and I will see you in my next video. Bye!